Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on volume of spheres. You'll learn how to find the volume of spheres. Now, real-world scenarios where you may need to find the volume of spheres could include how to find the volume of an ice cream scoop, and even how to find the volume of air in a beach ball. Warm thoughts when I think of beach balls and oceans and sand and not snow <laughs> that we have here now. So our vocabulary startup. A sphere is a set of all points in space that are a given distance known as the radius from a given point known as the center. And we'll complete the graphic organizer. Describe the shape of the cross section. Well, that's a circle. Name this part of the sphere, well, that red line is the radius. Name this part of the sphere, well, it's pointing right to that center point, so it's the center. And two examples of a sphere, well, could be a basketball, maybe the moon. Our real world link. Brittany purchased a necklace that contained a round pearl with a diameter of 7.5 millimeters. What is the circumference of the largest circle around the outside of the pearl, round to the nearest tenth? Well, we need to remember that circumference equals pi times diameter. So circumference is going to be about equal to 3.14 times the 7.5, or 7 and 5 tenths. And you multiply those together to get 23 and 55 hundredths. But if you round to the nearest tenth, this is going to be 23 and 6 tenths millimeters. So our key concept is volume of a sphere. The volume V of a sphere is 4 thirds the product of pi and the cube of the radius R. So volume equals 4 thirds times pi times the radius to the third power. You can use the formula for the volume of a sphere to solve mathematical and real-world problems. Our first guided example, find the volume of the sphere and round to the nearest tenth. We st always start off with our formula, volume equals four-thirds pi r cubed. We replace the r with six for the radius, and we solve it to get 904 and eight tenths. So the volume of a sphere is about 904 and 8 tenths cubic millimeters, which you could also write as millimeters cubed. And just an interesting side note here, exact and approximate. Whenever you round or use 3.14 for pi, like we did here, you are finding the approximate value, which is why you see the little squiggly equal signs or approximately equal to. An answer left in terms of 256 thirds pi is an exact value. Now, do we got it? Find the volume of each sphere and round to the nearest tenth. Okay. Well, volume formula for a sphere, for part A here, is volume equals four-thirds pi times radius to the third power. So this is going to equal four-thirds times pi, and our radius here is not 22. The diameter is 22. So the radius is 11. And so I'll have 4 thirds times, I'll approximate here, 3.14 times 11 cubed is 1,331. And now when I multiply these numbers together, the result is 5,572 and 45 hundredths centimeters cubed. However, I'm asked to round this to the nearest tenth. And when I look one spot to the right, my final answer for this is 5,000. 572, and the 5 is going to round it up to 5 tenths 
centimeters cubed. And as we move on to example B, let's start off by writing our formula as we always should. Volume equals four-thirds pi times your radius cubed. And so volume is going to equal four-thirds times pi times your five cubed. So volume is four-thirds times 3.14 and 5 to the third power is 125. And when I multiply these three numbers together, I get the volume equals 523.3 repeating. And so my answer is 523.3, since the 3 is not going to round the 3 up, millimeters cubed. Now, as we look at our second guided example, a spherical stone in the courtyard of the National Museum of Costa Rica has a diameter of about eight feet. Find the volume of the spherical stone, round to the nearest tenth. Not just a word problem using our radius, but make sure the diameter here is eight, so the radius is four. Solve it like you do the previous examples, then you get the volume of 268 and one tenth cubic feet. Let's see if we can do that ourselves. So dish contains a spherical scoop of vanilla ice cream with a radius of one and two tenths inches. What is the volume of the ice cream? Well, we'll start with our formula. Volume equals four thirds times pi radius cubed. So volume is going to equal four thirds times pi times our radius, which is given here, is one and two tenths cubed. So volume is going to equal four thirds. We'll approximate now 3.14 for pi. And 1.2 to the third power is 1.728, or one and 728 thousandths. And when you multiply all three numbers together, you get a solution of 7.23456. That's kind of fun. And when you round this to the nearest tenth, your solution would be volume equals 7.2 or 7 and 2 tenths, our units, inches cubed. So 7 and 2 tenths inches cubed is our solution here. Our next guided example, a volleyball has a diameter of 10 inches. A pump can inflate the ball at a rate of 325 cubic inches per minute. How long will it take to inflate the ball and round to the nearest tenth? First step, find the volume. And the volume was 523 and 6 tenths. Then they wrote a proportion saying, all right, if 325 inches cubed is one minute, 523 and 6 tenths inches cubed is how many minutes? Cross multiply, divide, and it would take one and six tenths minutes to inflate the ball. So, a snowball has a diameter of six centimeters. How long would it take the snowball to melt if it melts at a rate of one and eight tenths cubic centimeters per minute? Round to the nearest tenth. We'll do example D right here. And so, first step, let's find the volume. We'll start off with our formula, volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. So volume is going to equal four thirds times pi. And our radius is not six, that's the diameter. The radius is three cubed. So volume is going to equal four thirds times 3.14 times 27 as 3 cubed is 27. And when I multiply these numbers together, the volume is 113 and 4 hundredths centimeters cubed. And now it comes time to set up our proportion. We're given 1.8 centimeters cubed per one minute, 
And we can set that equal to then our volume, 113 and 4 hundredths centimeters cubed over how many minutes? Well, x minutes. And now we can cross multiply the 1.8 times x is going to equal 113.04 times 1. And at this point I can divide by 1.8 on both sides. x equals 62.85 units is minutes, but we're asked to round to the nearest tenth, and so the 5 is actually going to round that up, so x is going to equal 62.9 minutes. So we can find the volume and then use a proportion to solve for the minutes. Now, what about volume of hemispheres? Think about when you've heard hemisphere before, maybe in social studies when you're dealing with the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere, western hemisphere, eastern hemisphere. Basically, it's half a sphere, and that's what exactly what it says here. A circle separates a sphere into two congruent halves, each called a hemisphere. So find the volume of the hemisphere and round to the nearest tenth. Well, just like when we were finding volumes of, say, half a cylinder, we found the volume of a cylinder and multiplied by one half. This is the same concept. We'll find the volume of a full sphere and multiply by one half. And that's exactly what's done here. We have our one half times the volume of a full sphere, and you can find the answer like that. And so in our examples, there's two of them, we'll just start with our formula volume equals one half times four thirds pi r cubed. And so volume is going to equal one half times four thirds times pi times the radius, which is 1 to the third power here. So volume is going to equal 1 half times 4 thirds times 3.14 and 1 cubed is 1. My solution is 2.09 centimeters cubed and when I looked around this to the nearest tenth, my solution is 2.1 centimeters cubed. And so in our last example of the lesson, we can once again start off volume equals one-half because it's a hemisphere times four-thirds pi r cubed. Volume is going to equal one-half times four-thirds pi. Our radius is given here at nine cubed. Volume equals one-half times four-thirds times 3.14 and 9 cubed is 729. When you multiply these four numbers together, you get 1,526 and 4 hundredths, which is just going to round to 1,526 and 0 tenths meters cubed. And that is it on this lesson on finding volumes of spheres and hemispheres. Good luck.